Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with Sean from Parker Greers. He's going to show us around one of his latest projects. Let's go take a look. So tiny. Well, I am. A small <laughs> six foot. Right. I've got to start interviewing small people. <laughs> it's right. going to be a requirement of joining the academy. At <laughs> five foot, like a height limit. We're actually going to be under the height limit. So, Sean, uh, we're at the property. Um, do you want to tell us about how you found this one? So, um, Paul actually found this one. Yeah. Um, he's got a good relationship with one of the local agents, and um, basically the the agent brought in the deal. Okay. Um, was it on market, off market? It was. Um, it was. It had been sold previously, right. and the the seller, uh, the, the purchaser, dropped out. Okay. Um, so it was kind of off market at the, at that moment in time. Right. Um, okay. We managed to we managed to get the deal. Okay, but you're primarily looking for new builds. Yeah. Um, had you told the agent that if anything comes up for refurbishment or modernisation that you'd be interested? Is that what yeah. you had in mind? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, we, we, we we're looking for new builds um, at the minute, but while we're, while we're waiting for one to materialise, yeah, we're we're happy to do renovations and okay. it's, it's just what we're used to anyway. Yeah, so. great. Okay, so we'll talk about your other projects a little bit later on in the video, which are pretty exciting. He's just been giving me a bit of an update on them. Uh, okay, so the agent brought it to you and run me by the viewing did you meet the vendor here did you just come here with the agent what was so, the off, off the sort of process that you went through so we just come with the agent um and he he was giving us hints on on the offers what we should sort of giving you where yeah, the guide price what, would be what it'd be going for okay yeah. great which is um you know which is key really you know we always talk about building relationships with agents so that like you say deals come to you before they come to the market if something falls through they know that you're in a strong position to probably you know act quick and buy it um, okay, so this property, what was it like when you uh, when you first come around to view it? Because I can see that that's had a new roof on it. Was that a flat roof originally? Yeah, that was a flat roof previously. Great, um, yeah. We've recently painted this as well because it was in terrible condition. <laughs> yeah, and that, so that's like the stone chimney at the side. Yeah. Um, but like you say, you painted that, make it look a lot fresh. Yeah, we've raised raised the windows. Um, raised the windows, yeah, because they were quite low looking at yeah, them. Yeah, made them both similar height. Uh, we're going to render the front and have an oak porch. Um, and yeah, so in, inside was a total renovation as well. It was really run down. Okay. Uh, so we've made the most of every room now. Great. Okay, so what was the property on the market for and how much did you end up paying for the property? So the market was on, so it was on the market for 320,000 and we ended up paying uh, 277,500. Okay, so you got a good discount there. Yeah. yeah, so that was good. And was your first offer accepted? Uh, yeah. So first offer accepted first straight away. Accepted. Great. So again, this shows the importance of building those relationships with the agents. The agents sort of give you an in, uh, inclination of what the vendor would be likely to take. Uh, and it just beats all this to in and fro in, getting into bidding wars. Uh, and yeah, so definitely uh, it really shows the highlights of building those relationships with the agents. Uh, and this is the result. Right, so one of the questions I get asked quite a lot, uh, and I'm sure you're going to want to know this watching, is... How have you funded this? Because people think that you've got to have big pots of money. And you were telling me that you actually haven't put any money into this deal. So how have you funded this one yourself? Yeah, so we went through your development broker. Okay. Um, and we got a private investor on board for a big chunk of the purchase. Okay, so private investor has put in a big chunk towards the purchase. The, the lender, development finance, has put in the rest of the purchase price and given you all the money for the refurb. Yeah. Yep, yeah, okay. And um, was this a private investor that you knew or someone you met recently? Yeah, some, someone, someone you know, know already. Yeah. Okay, great. And um, <clears throat> you, I presume you're just giving them like a fixed rate return, which is going to you know far outweigh anybody who's got money sitting in the bank. Yeah. And as we know with inflation, your money is eroding at around sort of 10 to 10 to 12 percent a year anyway. Um, so that's a win-win, and that's what we always talk about doing a win-win. Okay, so let's talk about the numbers. Um, what's the property going to be worth when it's finished? So it's going on the market for offers over 425. Okay, I mean offers over your sort of minimum price, 425. Yeah. That seems to work well because then people know not to put an offer in lower than that. But also, if you've got three or four buyers, um, you can then move to like a sealed bid. So there's best and final offers. Okay, so that's the gross development value. Um, bill costs, I mean, you're managing this project yourself with your business partner, Paul. Um, what sort of profit will you walk out, you know, once you've done? So we're, we've been getting paid to build it, and okay. also we're going to walk out with um, around 30,000 profit on top. Okay, so 
you normally do this stuff for, you, for customers, for clients, you know, building extensions and, and renovations and, uh, and, and big projects. Um, but in this case, you're getting paid what you would anyway. Uh, and, you know, trades get a good rate of pay. It's a good paid job, and it should be for what we do. £30,000, um, you know, still pretty good. I mean, you haven't got any customers coming down here, making changes, telling you what you can and can't do. You've been using this uh, as a bit of an infill job, haven't you, as well? So yeah. you've got... You're quite busy with your work anyway, as you always yeah, are, because your reputation. Um, but like you say, you, you know, someone's always been here, but you and Paul personally, you just come down here occasionally in between the other trades. So it's not like you two are doing all the work yourself, is it? You've got other trades coming, like plaster has been in, and yeah. um, you've yeah. done bits yourself. So we were talking actually, just before we came on video, that one of the biggest benefits, because this isn't like the million pound um, you know, deal, but for you guys with the other projects you've got coming up, this was almost like a, a little fill-in job. Um, great opportunity to work with the investor, but also, like we talked about with development finance, this can really help your track record. Um, that, that was a big uh, big reason why we took it up. One of the big reasons, yeah, because like, it's all very well saying you can build a house. You know, you need some kind of CV, and the more you can put on that CV, just helps you get um, like a better, range of funders so more funders will come to you if you've got a better cv they'll also give you better rates probably some lower fees um but look, you know how sort of long are you going to be working on this project in total so let's say could you put it into weeks so you and paul personally how many weeks do you think you'd have spent on this project in physical work um, on it probably six weeks six weeks so you know 30 grand for six weeks work on top of being paid yeah. your day rate or your week rate or however however you price the job sort of you know, now you can start and see it's actually a pretty good job. And, um, you know, this property is a bungalow, so bungalows always sell. There's always a sweet spot for buyers. It's in a good area. Um, you've, you've got some signs up outside. So you've already had people sort of walking by and speaking to you. And it's a, that's a good opportunity for you to build a bit of rapport with the neighbours walking by. Um, and you've got, like I say, you've got your banners up so you can get some more opportunities from that. Yeah. So great, yeah. The numbers are pretty good on the scheme of things. And, you know, we'll talk about the big stuff again in a little bit shortly. Um, but it's got some more exciting projects coming up. Okay, so you and Paul are bricklayers by trade, like me. So bricklayers are God, by the way, for anyone watching this video. Um, well, you know, without us, no one gets to put the joists on, no one gets to do the roofs, no one gets to do the plastering. So we're, we're quite an important trade. Uh, a dying breed, unfortunately. Um, but so tell us about some of your previous projects you've done, because you've worked on some fairly decent size extensions. Um, yeah, yeah, we've done, uh, we've done some three or four real, real big two-story extensions um, that have got like double garages with them as well. Yeah, okay. um, and we also take on the, the smaller extensions, single stories, um, yeah. orangeries, we've done a lot of those, um, garage conversions. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, garage conversions are great little jobs. Yeah. But most of your extensions are quite sort of, you don't really do like the small porches and the, yeah. the nine square meters, like you say, you, you know, you sort of decent size extension. Yeah, just some pretty like, big, almost like a house on the ones. It's yeah. like building a house on the house. I've seen some of the stuff you guys have done. Yeah. And um, do you guys sort of, is there you know, other stuff that you do, like other trades that you do yourself, you and Paul? So, yeah, we're, we're pretty much put a hand to anything. Um, Paul Paul's jumps on the groundwork, some of the drainage. Um, yeah, drive digger. That's yeah, good, drive yeah. digger, yeah. He, he put all the turf out front. Did he, yeah, turfing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can jump on plastering, tiling, carpentry. Oh, so it's not like you can't do then just electrics and plumbing you sort of leave yeah, alone. Just electrics and plumbing with <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I think it's really essential that, you know, it's great to be one trade and good at your trade, but I also think that it's just a big advantage if you can turn your hands to something. Because sometimes you just need a carpenter for probably a couple of hours to do something. Yeah. And some carpenters is, is too small a job to get them there, or you've got to pay them a lot of money for sort of two or three hours work. Yeah. And you can say, well actually, rather than us having to finish here at eleven o'clock and wait for the carpenter to come tomorrow then we've got to go back on the next day. It's like your work process can be seamless. And I guess this is the advantage of me working with my boys who are more skilled and why we build houses so quick, because we don't have these gaps. There's always something for us to do. Yeah. Um, we just, sometimes we just think, well, actually, it's just quicker for us to do that um, than wait for another trade. Um, but definitely a big advantage by being able to do lots of different things. And um, you also then know what other trades are doing, what to get ready for them, yeah. you know, prepping stuff, what materials to get for them then they like actually working for you more than other people because you understand what they've got to go through. You know, if a, if a plaster is going to come in here and plaster, the last thing they need is loads of rubbish in here and yeah, stuff's not ready and, you know. So I know we haven't got the lantern in yet, but that's not holding anything up. 
like I say, it's allowed you to get this done. Um, these things, they'll give you a lead time, but they're very rarely turn up on time. But um, yeah. like you say, you've sheeted same, it up. Same with the front door. Same with the front door. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're about to change the front door as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, great. Okay, and you, you and Paul came down to work with me recently on one of the builds that I did with me and my sons. Um, so one of the things we do is we give people the chance to come and sort of provide a day's worth of labour for, for free. And then we donate their day rate to our charity for Macmillan for Cancer. Um, so that was great. What a great opportunity yeah, really to work together. Yeah, 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 really enjoyed my boys like working with you as yeah, well. Nice um, and you're looking to come and do that down again on our next site. Yeah, definitely. Um, so hopefully yeah. we'll probably get two or three trails down for the day. Uh, it's just a good day that we can go and have a bit of banter. Um, we all learn something from each other, don't we? We've all got yeah. our own little ways of doing stuff. I remember you had your, your gaiters over your, um, your socks, didn't you? My boys had never seen them. Yeah. And uh, they was like, what, such a, such a good idea from stopping little bits of brick. Stop them going in your boot when you're shorts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So that's something that Sean and Paul have done for us and, and looking to do again. So that's great. Uh, maybe you guys will do the same when you get on your site and, you know, good way to meet some local labour. Yeah, definitely. Networking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, great to know that you guys are multi-skilled. Do you and Paul sort of have separate roles in the business? Um, yeah, Paul's more hands-on. Um, he likes to come and organise the site and... Um, get stuck into the work, uh, and I'll, I'll do all of the paperwork, um, searching for the next jobs. Yeah, so you um, deal with the customers, the quoting? Yeah. Okay, and um, with the development side of things, is it yourself that sort of does looking for land, speaks to the agents? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll both go on um, site visits. and Both on site visits? People. Yeah. I mean, when we've got sort of partners, what we sort of say to them is like, if one goes and does a viewing first, Builds a bit of rapport, yeah. and then it's always a good re uh, a sort of good excuse or a good reason to go back and do a second viewing. You know, let me introduce you to my business partner Paul, yeah. uh, and then vendors just sort of like that because it gives you more time to build rapport. He's a better talker as well, so it's always. Is he a better talker? Is he? He's, he's fairly quiet. Paul is, <laughs> but he's um, but yeah, no, he's a real nice guy. But you know, you two are very similar, yeah. um, and I could understand why customers want to take you on as a contractor or investors want to invest in you and agents want to work with you. I, I, I get it because like you say, you, you know, what you see is what you get. Two honest guys, do things the right way. Um, and you know, that's what people like, you know, people do business with people, don't they? So, but yeah, it's great that you've got your roles and responsibilities sort of clear. And then there's some stuff that you like doing together and then working to your strengths as well, which is key for uh, sort of any business. Yeah, definitely. So everything's been going pretty good on the site. Um, looks like you got to a good stage now where everything's plastered, ready to start doing your second fix next week. Uh, and, you know, them sort of stages move really, really quick. But have you had any challenges getting to this sort of stage? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we, we we had a bit of a hold up with 7 Trent. We had to get a build over agreement. Um, right, because this is the new extension part. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, we, we couldn't progress with the build, uh, which we, we got the build up anyway, but we kept the floor out just in case we had to dig, okay. dig the pipe out. Right, so you put all the foundations in, built all the shell, yeah. but you just hadn't screeded the floor. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's a good, you know, that's thinking, isn't it? Saying, well, actually, can we make a start? Can we do as much as we can while we're waiting for this agreement to be approved? Yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot of people would have just, that, they wouldn't have done anything. Yeah, but that yeah. would have been paying high interest rates. <laughs> well, this is what you're going to think about, isn't it? Like you say, if you're borrowing money, whether it's from private investors or, or lenders, you know, and this is what, you know, this is the sort of things we talk about, like in mentoring and that we brainstorm and say, right, how can we mitigate that? How can we do something different that other developers are doing where they probably make the mistakes? And, um, you know, you guys are pretty switched on. And like you say, just building this and getting it done to the stage where you can carry on the works has allowed you to now keep on the track of the program. Yeah. Um, what was the process with them doing the, the, the pipe? Did they have to renew it? Did they have to... So was it damaged? Uh, someone came out with a camera. Uh, it was like a, one of the old bits from... And Sort of yeah. pipes, um, and they found like blisters on it, Why? so uh, they had to send some of the civil and civil engineer side out of Seven Trent. So that was the blisters were inside the actual pipe, and yeah. they only found it from the camera. Okay. Yeah, so they bore a hole straight through from right. one manhole to the next, um, and then put some kind of sleeve. Yes, I've seen those. Yeah, they can put like a liner inside yeah. it, can't they? Yeah, so. and then. Um, that just allowed you to then go and just do yes, all the screen. So they, they sent their report back to building control then, and building control yeah. gave us the go-ahead to carry on. Okay, great. Uh, I mean, another thing is, I don't think a lot of people would even know that you could build over the pipes. Yeah. Um, or they wouldn't get the agreements in place. Yeah. Yeah, 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 some people will actually build this stuff, don't get the agreement, 
and then when someone comes to sell the property, yeah. you know, there you go, not got the paperwork, then you, this, you know, this is all finished, lived in, these call cool real headaches. So, you know, knowing what you're doing uh, can be critical yeah. um, for, like you say, not making these sort of mistakes. Okay, so earlier in the video, we talked about um, some of the other sites that you've got coming up. Um, do you want to just give us a bit of a rundown on those? So we've got a property not far from this one that we're buying. Uh, we're going to put a big extension on it and, and resell that. Okay. Uh, that's got a huge garden that we're hoping to split off um, and maybe get a free plot out of that. Great. So, you know, buying a house, extending it, doing the work, sell that. Like I say, split the plot, you get the plot for, for free. Sometimes you sell the house at a little bit of a loss, but like you say, you get the land at maybe, you know, 20, 30 grand, which is a cheap building plot. Yeah. Uh, and you're doing that one with investors again? Or? Yeah, so that's yeah. another, that one will be a joint venture. Oh, a joint venture, yeah. Yeah, that's with a couple that we've previously done work for before. So that was a previous customer? Yeah, previous customer. Wow, so this is, um, I, I guess this really highlights of telling everyone what you're doing. So we always say about a three foot, well, anybody who comes within three foot, you say, hi, I'm a property developer, I give people a better return on their money than what you get in the bank. That opens up the conversation and away you go, and it just clearly shows, isn't it? So. Yeah. Like you said, reputation is key for you guys. Um, these customers know, you, like, and trust you because they've seen you working around the house and you've done a great job. Yeah. Uh, and they obviously want to support you guys further and say, well, like, how can we get involved and, like you say, create a win-win. Yeah. Okay, so that's one great project. And uh, what about some of the others? So um, we're also looking at um, a plot of land to build eight houses on. Okay, so bigger stuff, yeah, yeah. quite precise stuff, yeah. yeah. And we've we've been going through one for about a year now uh, with another previous client. Okay, another previous client. Oh, right, yeah, right. She, she's got a plot of land and hoping to build three bungalows on it. But um, oh. yeah, so that's, that's just been dragging out for a long okay, time. Okay, so this, this is an option agreement, isn't it? Where, like yeah. you say, you'll take it through planning at your cost and yeah. to some degree your risk. I mean, obviously, we know the certainty, so it's not, it's not risky. Um, I guess the key thing here for anyone watching this is that you need multiple deals because some take longer than what you think get Definitely. started yeah um, i mean we've just done two sites five houses and one house in between waiting to get on our free bungalow site yeah you know so, so just as filling jobs <laughs> yeah just as filling jobs but you know potentially well once we sell this house there's like nine hundred thousand pound of profit just as a filling job so it's you know these filling jobs are quite good yeah. um but yeah it just goes to show sometimes you need multiple deals with the option agreements I mean you can control them yeah. so like you say if you don't want to complete on it just yet because this is taking a bit longer or you've got another one of these you can then say right got the planning let's exercise the option we're now ready to go we've got the funds etc etc so option agreements uh, are great uh, are you got any are you still looking at stuff are you still uh, actively yeah yeah we're yeah. still still looking as well um, I haven't been I haven't been on the ball as much as I should be lately. But, no, yeah. but once you get two or three deals, you can yeah. almost take your foot off the gas. Yeah. I think once you get more deals as well, you can put in lower offers as well, because yeah. you're not in, you know, it's not like, such well, a rush to get one. Yeah. yeah, and you might say, well, actually, I'll leave it on the table. Um, come back to it. Come back to it, yeah. So a lot of the guys that we work with Mentor, they're now getting a lot of sites that they looked at sort of six to nine months ago, put an offer in, it didn't get accepted. Uh, somebody else has probably bought it. Valuation is probably coming a lot lower than what the, the, the buyer said because they're overpaying. Uh, and then that deal is coming back to the person purely because they've built a good relationship with the agent and the vendor. Uh, and then, yeah, they're getting it cheaper than the original offer. So it's sometimes 40, 50 grand cheaper. We're seeing a lot of that now, and there's a lot more land on the, on the market now than what it used to be. So I think it's going to be a very good time for you guys when you do start looking again and, like I say, keep in touch with the agents. Yeah. Um, I think you can get a better deal now probably than what you could have done six to nine months ago as well. Because yeah. you did, you've looked at a lot of stuff, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Did, yeah. And probably more than most people um, who we've worked with. But, you know, it can be a numbers game. Some people just one or two deals and, and they get one. You've probably, what, 20 good, 20 good plus offers in, I would have yeah. said, in the first year. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, you know, the fruits sort of come in. Uh, you're on site and you've got more in the pipeline. So it's not like you haven't put the work in. No, it's just well, the market yeah. was challenging last year. Yeah. And you know you were in quite a quite a desirable area with a lot of competition. Yeah. Where it's probably where I am, probably not as much. Um, but yeah, you know, you, you're cracking on now. We're, we're doing multiple sites, which is great. Yeah, we're loving it. Really enjoying it. And that's key, isn't it? I mean, you know, I think most people are going to work Monday to Friday working for customers for a wage. You know, you guys are doing the same sort of thing, but now getting paid a lot more money. 
And you know, once you start doing some of these, you know, you do eight houses, that's a serious amount of money for just doing less work, really. You'll find out you, you will start doing less work because of the leverage yeah. uh, getting those trades in. Okay. Okay, so um, it's been great for you to show us around. What would you say to anybody watching this video who's maybe thinking of doing you know, something like this for themselves, maybe turning into new build developments or just property development in general? What, what, what would be your advice? Um, get the education for it, really. Um, if, if you've got experience already, uh, leverage out everyone that you can. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, just keep putting loads of offers in. Yeah, keep definitely putting, putting loads of offers in. You've got to put a lot of work in. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys know how to do this stuff, yeah. just as a lot of the a lot of the people watching this video will. They know how to build a house, know how to build an extension. Um, when you came on the three-day course, what was it you, was there one particular thing or one or two things that you particularly came for that you just said, well, actually, if I can learn that, then yeah, we can do the whole thing. So yeah, it's the finance side of things, finance, and how, yeah. to structure, how to structure your company. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, mainly the finance really, and how, how to get investors. Yeah, a lot um, of people struggle with like what to say to the vendor negotiations. That's and getting that's confidence for offers in as well, really. Yeah. yeah. So that's why that's why I wanted to go on the mentorship as well. And yeah. You pretty much hold your hand all the way through it. Yeah. Every time you get a deal, you can send it over to me. We can yeah. jump on a Zoom or have a call. And um, like I say, you've had you've had a few sort of not challenges, but just the market because you haven't done anything wrong. It's just been the market. It's been a bit crazy. Now you're continuing to do what you're doing you're now starting to get more stuff accepted um, yeah. because like you say, you've, you've just done it the right way to do it. Because we put so much practice in putting loads of offers in. This is it, isn't it? a bit more confident but now. Some people are so worried about messing up or overpaying or not knowing the numbers because they haven't got the education that it holds them back from doing stuff like this. You know, so it just shows, isn't it? Like you say, once you know what you're doing, you get out and practice, 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 get the confidence uh, and then eventually, you know, you're raising money, getting the sites, you're on here and it won't be long before you get those profits and scaling up and doing bigger stuff and, and reaping the rewards. So. Yeah, yeah. Happy to start off small as well and just build away up from Exactly, it. yeah. You don't want to be making mistakes on, on a 20 house site, you know. So always start small, uh, either rinse and repeat or scale up, you know, choose to scale up if you want to. So you, you're doing things that, exactly how I teach, exactly how I advise. It's the way I would do it, even knowing what I know now. Yeah. I would still start off small and, and scale up later with it as the experience. You know, and your money builds up because when yeah. you've got on these bigger sites, you know, 40, 50, 60 grand of fees yeah, can be sw way. swallowed up, and yeah. you know, things like the pipe in here can cause people mistakes if they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what have you done out, out the front so far? Yeah, so we've completely renovated the whole front. We've put a new new brick wall out. Um, we're going to tarmac the drive, we've got a nice pathway, and new turf and new fence. Okay, so, uh, and you're painting the chimney, like you said. Yeah. And we're going to re render the front. New, new porch, oak porch. Okay, oak, uh, oak porch, door, yeah. And flat roof over the garage into a pitch roof. Okay, and with the oak frame, is that like a kit or is that bespoke? So it's a bespoke oak porch. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got a we've got a lock up at um, a local farm, and and the guys there they work with oak. Okay, all the time, great. So I mean, um, like I say, when this is done, you know, and the oak frames on there. It is all about the curb appeal, isn't yeah, it? And like definitely. you say, nice, nice black driveway. Yeah. You've obviously had a new garage door on there. Was that already on? No, that came with it. I did it. So that's, it. that's quite new. <laughs> Electric garage door. Yeah. So that's good. Um, nice block paving path. Like I say, yeah. just a nice bit of lawn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's looking yeah. great. Yeah, Paul's done a great job on the front. It's most of it, most of his idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what sort of door are you having on the front? Uh, composite. Composite. Yeah, what half glass side, yeah, side, yeah, glass, so side yeah, panel? Yeah, got a stretch of glass down the middle and a side panel, yeah. Yeah, yeah and you raise that up. Yeah, so we're going to raise it up, yeah. So you've built like a media wall in here? Yeah. Is that for electric fire, electric like the digital, fire. digital fire? Yeah, yeah digital fire. Yeah. We're going to have spotlight, little tiny spotlights in yeah. the cubby holes. Great. Um, yeah, so we've, we've cut off the length of the living room and on the back of that we've made a utility room. Right, I see. Um, was that removed? Was there a chimney? that part of the old chimney breast? So, yeah, that, that this was part of the old chimney breast and yeah. we've, we've knocked into... Knocked that out. Yeah. Yeah. And cut, cut the chimney off. 
Okay, yeah, and then you lift the windows, put some new windows, windows in. Yeah, it's okay. Head out to Utility room in there. Utility room. Yeah, and you're on gas with the boiler. Gonna have the boiler in there, yeah. Got a boiler, yeah. Just go combi. Yeah. Do you go for any particular brand or? Uh, Whatever on offer. Yeah, I think half of them are like Baxi. Baxi? Yeah, I mean, you can't go around with Baxi, I don't think. Yeah. We've had a few of them in a the time. Yeah. They've always been pretty good. So this was um, this was original kitchen. You were saying really small. Yeah, yeah, just this area here. So we've pretty much trebled the size of the kitchen. Yeah, and, and, and so I like these with the windows. And then, like you say, once this lantern's done, yeah, it's going to be real. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And what you got? Island. Yeah, island yeah. with a sink uh, in it. What was that? Uh, it's just the for electrics. Dishwasher. Dishwasher. Yeah. And then sink over there. Sink over there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go sink over that side. So what you sort of just doing L shape or yeah. Yeah. yeah? It's an L shape. Okay. Great. Just gonna have a TV on the wall over there. Do you know when your lanterns come in? Um, yeah. Hopefully next Wednesday. That's getting fitted. Yeah. yeah. And then. And front door. Will you need to still plaster in there and trim it all off? Yeah. So yeah. I'll put the insulation in. Yeah. Um, and then plaster in there. Yeah. So and what would that just go up into? Thing, it's right. not a flat one, is it? it was no, it's not a flat one, yeah. It's a lantern, a yeah. Lantern, yeah. yeah. Um, pools and all slabbing, I presume. It's a nice job out there. Yeah, yeah. We've uh, both had a go on that. What we found is on all of our houses, um, it's well worth spending a bit more money on the patios. Yeah. Because people come around and when you think of the competition or your competition, what everyone else is looking at, you know, it's like six slabs and they, they've got nowhere yeah. to sit. Yeah, um, the buff ones as well. Yeah, we put the buff ones on. What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, it, it does make a big difference, and a lot of people will say, "Oh, yeah, we can see ourselves sitting out here." Yeah. You know, so you yeah, got one, nice. one more window to change over there, I presume. Yeah, as soon as we've got the kitchen moved out of that bedroom. Yeah. Oh, so you have got your kitchen already? Yeah. Um, yeah down to get that. So you, you would say if somebody's come out of a really expensive house, but it's like basically brand yeah, new. Yeah, so it's a bit of a mansion in um, London that was yeah. selling it on eBay. Right. Um, we've just come across it and yeah, yeah we'll go pick right it up. Right place at the right time. Yeah. What um, sort of money did you pay for that? Uh, 5,700, but it's... It, it's, it's got all it's Siemens really, appliances. Siemens you're saying, appliances, right? yeah. Wow. It's got instant hat top, instant hot tops. tops yeah. <laughs> yeah. And do you say it's got granite worktops or something? Like? Granite worktops. Wow, um, that's cheap. And a uh, waste disposal. Yeah. Basically. And will you fit that yourself or will you just get a carpenter in here for, for uh, a day or two? Yeah, so I'll work in with the carpenter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it's a good size room, isn't it, this one? Yeah, lovely. So a little storage cupboard there. These are really important. You yeah. think about it, hoovers, yeah. um, ironing board. Yeah. One thing we do in our cupboards is we always put a socket in there now. Oh, really? Just because people Charge have- the hoovers. Yeah, cordless yeah. hoovers. So. <laughs> Something to note. Yeah. So considering this is like not a massive room, but with that big window, it definitely makes you feel bigger, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this is, is the smallest room in the house. Okay, okay. so you're going to render the extension? Yeah, it's yeah. getting rendered. Um, and, and back of the house and the front is all being right. rendered as well. Yeah. And what, what are you going to put on top? Just uh, curtain stone? Yeah, just yeah. curtains. What sort of roof did you go? Is that flat roof? Uh, rubber roof. Yeah. Rubber roof, flat yeah. Roof. What, what made you choose that over, say, fiberglass? Um, we've just, we've never, I mean, we've never used fiberglass before, no. so that's the only reason, really. But it's something we're going to be looking into. Yeah. Because I have seen a couple of them. We've only ever gone fiberglass. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I don't know what the difference is cost-wise. Yeah. Or, I mean, obviously fiberglass, you, you are governed by the weather, but I'm sure you are on the rubber roofs as well. Yeah. Um, Every time we try One of my friends, he, he always is. Yeah, you never use a fiberglass. Really? So maybe it's just that thing. We've never tried each other's yeah, just method. The way around. Yeah, yeah, but I'm always open to trying new methods. I know a lot of people do yeah, do true. stuff. So that's your last room to do. Yeah. Um, what have you? Did you say you knocked two so doors on it? It was a very small bathroom. There's a wall straight down the middle and two doors there. Uh, a small bathroom and a separate toilet. So okay. we've, we've knocked that wall out, made it into a bit a bit of a bigger bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've done some of the things on ours. Okay, so good size master bedroom. Yeah. Uh, and what have you done here? Because you created a nice size ensuite. Yeah, so we've knocked through into the garage to create an uh, ensuite and also keep some storage space at the front. Yeah, okay, and in there, shower, sink, toilet. Yeah, so shower, sink, toilet. It's quite a large one as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, most people, they like a garage, but to be fair, 
these old ones in, then you can't fit a car in there. And you've got no. a good sized driveway on here, yeah. get two cars on there quite easily. Yeah. Plus, like, you know, the street's not a very busy street, so. Yeah, it's a nice quiet area. area. Yeah. It is, yeah. Okay, and um, I presume looking at this, you've renewed all your heating pipes. Yeah, all new heating. Yeah. New central heating. Full rewire. Full rewire, yeah. So, like I say, you're not back to brick, but. Pretty much. Have you just re skimmed over all these existing walls and yeah, ceilings? Yeah, a few of them had to be dabbed, but yeah, I've just re skimmed over everything else. Yeah. New ceilings. And you've got all your bathroom stuff there, so that's ready to go. So, like I say, second fix next week, two weeks. Yeah. You'll pretty so, much have mostly second up. fix done. Yeah. yeah. What sort of doors are you going for? Oak. Oak doors, yeah, and yeah, they work quite glass, nice. The glass one in the kitchen, so. yeah, yeah, they do work quite nice just to break up a bit of plainness when you do them all yeah. white and yeah, yeah, and great. And will you carpet this and completely finish off the finish? So, carpet in all of the bedrooms and the living room, yeah, uh, and then it's um, uh, LVT flooring, so not the rest, yeah, yeah, yeah. LVT is pretty good because you can do all your skirtings, paint them, clean everything up, it's the last job, yeah, with laminate. Yes, it might be a cheap alternative, but then you've got the risk of somebody coming in, dropping something, damaging the middle of the plank, which is where it always happens. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah, or you put or you put a little trim around the skirt, which is not the nicest yeah. way, to be honest, but we have done some like that if we've had to. Uh, but it's not a preferred choice. No. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, how can people get in touch with you, Sean? So we've got a website, parkergreersdevelopments.co.uk. Um, I've got Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn and also parkagreers at gmail.com Okay, so uh, maybe if you're an investor watching this or you're, you've got some land opportunities, maybe a joint venture, are you based around Nuneaton? Nuneaton. Nuneaton, so near Leicestershire. Um, great area, uh, like I say, you guys know what you're doing. It's been really great for you to share, you know, show us around one of your projects. Looking forward to certainly coming back when this is finished and hopefully you'll be on, site, on another site so we can uh, come and see you there. Yeah. And um, yeah, if you like the video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.